48 hours to read as much as I can. This sounds like a lot of time, but in my experience, the 48 hours goes way too quickly, but I have a gigantic pile of possibilities. These are just some. These are just the ones I own physically. I just have way too many options and far too little time to read them all, but I'm excited to see what this weekend brings. If you're unsure about what Weekend of Peace Talks is, it's a 48 hour readathon that happens within the month long readathon that I run. Essentially within Ramathon, we read for 48 hours and any books started and completed within those 48 hours get you an extra plus 10 to your team. The announcement video for Ramathon will be linked down below. There's still one week left and you can backlog all your books if you are still interested in joining, but I do run this readathon every single year. So another one will be happening next year. I'm committing to it. For this weekend, I am using a spinner wheel because what better way to make decisions than by not making complete decisions. And I'll be spinning to figure out which realm I am reading for. I will then pick my book based on what can gain me some points for that realm and I think it's time that we do that. I think I'm gonna use my stack of books. Haha. -ha. Maybe a few more. That's high enough. And we're gonna spin. It looks like my first read of the readathon will be going to Realm of Creation. So for that, I'm kind of looking for books with blue covers or books with animals on the cover. I decided to pick up Demon, which is one of the books in the God Eater cycle. Rob J. Hayes last year, I think maybe earlier this year, released a Kickstarter because he's writing the Trilogy of Trilogies is what he calls it. So he wrote three book ones and they all are in the same world. So there's Harold, which is like the main story. Another one that I can't remember the title of right now that is a prequel. And then there's Demon that is a prequel to the prequel. They can all be read in any order. They just add extra dimension to each other. Today, I got the ebooks of them. So I'm starting with Demon, which is like the first prequel. And I'm gonna read in like chronological order. I think you either have to read in chronological order or reverse chronological order. This one's just roughly 200 pages, so I figured I'd start with it. I'm 25% in and I'm not really sure how I'm feeling about it. I was really liking it at the beginning, but currently we're traveling. I don't really like traveling, but this is also really dark. There's like cannibalism and just a lot of like gore. Like there's a lot of like body horror. I need the plot to pick up for me to get invested, but I love Rob J. Hayes' writing. Like there's been a lot of really iconic quotes already, which is like one of my favorite things about his writing. Like that's one of my favorite things about Along the Razor's Edge is all the Esco quotes that live rent-free in my brain now. So I'm hoping that this like pulls it out of me. Like I end up loving this. Also, don't at me because I'm hunkering down on this couch for the rest of the night, probably the rest of the weekend. So you're gonna see a lot of updates from this exact same position and I'm so sorry. Okay, I have made it to 50% into a demon and honestly, I'm liking it now. I'm really excited. I was really worried I wasn't going to enjoy it. There was a traveling bit that really, really made me struggle. However, we're past the traveling now and I'm enjoying the new setting. I think it's really cool and I'm really, really intrigued by what all is going on. And I like our main character quite a bit. I feel like she's inquisitive and she's smart and I like that in a character, but I also think she's going to burn the world down around her for how it treats her. And I love that in a main character. I think she's gonna get her revenge at some point or something. Essentially in the story, we're following our main character who comes from a small village. In this world, there are demons everywhere. There is no way to fight the demons. You can only hide. So villages do everything to hide from the demons, including not have fire. They use the most minimal amount of fire to do anything and pretty much are cold most of the time because fire means demons, demons mean bad. But the demons come, they attack her village, and she finds herself taken by the demons for some unknown purpose and I'm trying to figure out what that purpose is and I'm enjoying it. I have 50% left and I'm excited to see where this goes. I have had a cupcake delivery and a Coca-Cola for some sugar and caffeine to keep me going because it's only nine o'clock. I have lots of reading still to do tonight. I just finished and I'm giving it four stars. I really, really enjoyed that in the end. The vibes were vibing by the end. The last 50% had me feeling so tense and disturbed. There is a chapter in this that I literally was like, oh my God, oh my God, that is so cruel. It does lean a little bit grim darky. It's, I don't think it is grim dark, but it definitely leans darker because a dark fantasy, there's cannibalism and a lot of like gore and death <laughs> and demons. <laughs> 
but I really overall enjoyed it. I think Rob J. Hayes just has really like incredible writing. I think he's a really strong technical writer and I love his stuff every single time. I don't know how I'm supposed to wait a whole year for the next part of the demon story. It's called The Archive of the God Eater. However, I can move on to the next prequel if I want to, like the, the other book one. So that might happen. It does have an animal on the cover. Honestly, also when I'm looking at the cover, it is kind of bluish. It's hard to tell. Mm, no, it's probably not 50% blue. Never mind. Oh, I, I, I can't get over how much I enjoyed that in the end. I'm literally, literally shocked. I'm pulling up the little link to get me some points. I was reading for the Realm of Creation. It was 206 pages, so that does pop me into the 10 point portion. And I did read it for the 48 hour readathon. So it was a casty fave since I gave it four stars. Does it count as a special edition since I only got it this early since I backed the Kickstarter? <laughs> I don't know. It is a book I paid for though. It was a poll pick. It is new to my TBR and it was a buddy read for me. And then it also has my cover item on the cover. Submit. Those are my first books done for the readathon, which means I need to do another spin. Not a nice angle or good lighting, but at least I have a flat surface. <laughs> It's still just ticking away back there, but it did land on shadows. I put a poll up for a next read. I'm closing it a little early. It's only been up there for like 10 minutes, but I want to keep reading. So I can't just like sit around here waiting for my poll to be answered. So I think we're going with Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison for my next book. I'm really excited. I read Black Sheep by the same author and I really, really, really enjoyed that one. I know really nothing about this other than it's like lit fic horror whatever that means but i liked black sheep so we're going with it also my boyfriend just texted me he's skiing for the weekend with some friends that they played the credit card game for dinner which as a previous server the credit card game is trauma there was nothing worse then when I had to go to a table and they're like, pick a credit card, pick one, and they have to pay. And then you hear about how you picked the wrong credit card. And it's so extreme and traumatic. Um, but I hope his friends had to pay and not him. Because that would be great. Oh, oh, he's typing. We can find out live. Why am I doing this in a vlog? You guys don't care about this. Type faster. Why does it take you so long to type? It's just going to be like, yes. Like, not even long. I can see the seconds ticking on my camera and he's still typing. I feel like... I can't just not wait now. Why? Ugh, Nicholas. Oh, he did not have to. Okay, I'm heading to bed, but I got to page 130 of Such Sharp Teeth. It is 11.30. I am gonna watch some TV. I can't help it. I'm probably gonna watch an episode of The Traders. My book update so far on this is that I'm not sure how I feel about it. I feel like for most of it, I'm kind of bored. Every maybe like 40 pages, there's something that really, really piques my interest. So I can't decide if I'm gonna DNF it or not. It really feels like just you're in the head of someone. You're watching someone's inner thoughts as she spirals because she thinks she's becoming a werewolf but there's no like mystery or intrigue because you know what happened so it's not like you're just like sitting there wondering like what she's becoming or something like this because like the first scene is the werewolf incident so like I don't know there's not enough intrigue really in this for me I think to make me love it but I'm not hating it and it still has the same writing style that Black Sheep had that is like really comedic that I was really liking so it's an easy read, I probably will finish it, but that's a tomorrow plan because tonight it's bedtime. Good morning, I have 100 pages left in Such Sharp Teeth and I am so ready for it to be done. I'm so sad, I really wanted to like this. I do like her writing style. I do think Rachel Harrison writes in a really easy, bingeable kind of way, but this story is lacking some kind of intrigue for me, some kind of mystery, something atmospheric. It feels very much more literary horror than I personally like. The message behind it is like really well done. In this, we're struggling with trauma and grief and the werewolf transformation mirrors things that have happened in our main character's past, as well as mirroring things that are happening to her sister right now. There's a lot of vulnerability in this story and I think the message comes across really clearly, but because I read for entertainment value, I'm just missing something to like catch my attention and make me want to keep reading and being like really, really invested. So I definitely am going to try to finish this as fast as possible so that I can move on to the next book.
I'm giving this two stars. This was not for me. This was really boring. This book is exactly what you know it's going to be from the first chapter. There was no level of like compelling plot line to follow. It was very much a spiral of this woman's thoughts. Essentially you're following a main character who gets bit by a werewolf and then knows she's turning into a werewolf and is dealing with her past trauma as well as her current day trauma of becoming a werewolf and what all that means while also falling in love. And I just didn't like it. It's not for me. I'm so so sad because I loved Black Sheep so much and now I'm really scared to try another Rachel Harrison. Very scared because this was so boring. <laughs> the message is really good. Like the trauma and the way that's handled, really really good. But like I was just very bored. Ugh. A little too literary for my own liking but let us at least get some points with it. This is 328 pages so I do get plus 10 for the team. Another 10 for reading it in the 48 hour readathon. It does have an even amount of letters in the title. It did win a poll pick but it's the cover color as well since it is a black book. We're now on to the next one. I actually have already spun so I know I'm reading for team time and I actually know what I'm going to be reading. I'm going to be reading Bound by Mark Lawrence. This is a short story that takes place between Red Sister and Grey Sister. It's only like 50 pages. It'll be a really quick read and I'm very very excited to get to it because I love this series with my whole heart and I always just like love being back with Nona so I'm excited to see what that means for me. I probably won't have a lot of thoughts on it since it's only 50 pages but I am very excited to finally finally read it because both times I've read this series I've skipped over the short story. Reading a short story made me feel very like good about myself like oh I can finish a book in one sprint and like I just feel like wow I've achieved so much already in this 48 hour readathon. I have a feeling I'm gonna go long for the next book but we will see. It depends where the wheel lands. I liked what this story did. It also kind of cemented some predictions I have about the magic system as I'm reading the Book of the Ice series because they are set in the same world. So it was kind of interesting to read this post everything. I think that this did a really good job with characters. It made me feel ooey gooey inside because I like the three characters that are present in this, Nona, Ara, and Regal. And I, I don't have a lot to say. I liked the plot in this. I liked the story in this. I liked the character development in this. I'm gonna give it four stars. It's a short story, so I feel like I can't give it five, but I'm gonna give it four. It's only 52 pages, so it doesn't get me extra points for that, but I will get the plus 10 for the 48 hours. It can be a casty fave. It is a book I paid for. A short story counts as a popcorn read. It did win a poll and I read it in one sitting. I can accurately say that. This also has a school setting, a cover item, and the cover color in it. This was a good point book for team time. Let's do another spin now. You can kind of see this on here, so good enough for me. Oh, wild. Ooh, this leaves it all up to me. I don't know what to do. I guess I'm just gonna put some books that I am very interested in in a poll and find out from there. I decided not to do a poll. I just kind of looked down and was like, I wanna read this book. I've wanted to read this book all month long, so why not, when I have a wild, use the opportunity to read this book? So I did pick up Heartless Hunter by Kristen Cicerelli. This is a YA fantasy, which I think also makes it lean to fantasy romance. In my opinion, all YA fantasy leans towards YA fantasy romance. I have yet to read one where there isn't romance as a main plot. <laughs> in this, we're following a world where the witches were in power, but there was a revolution and the witches are now hated. And there is a specific guard that's only job really is to hunt down these witches. Witches are seen as evil and seen as bad because something happened. We don't really know exactly what happened. Our main female character happens to be a witch but she's also in this guard but she is working to save the witches secretly. Our main male character is kind of the reason for the revolution. He is like the number one blood guard hunter. Both are trying to use each other to get what they want. I don't know how I feel about this so far. There is a plot hole that's kind of bothering me. I need to get it in my brain that this book is going to be a fun time and not necessarily be like a logical world building driven story. I kind of just need to have a good time with it. My problem is I think it's setting up so much world building and history and then it's lacking for me. We're in books like Powerless that were also fun time reads. I feel like I got dropped into the romance really quickly. So I was taken away by like the fun banter and the fun times and the fun characters. Characters. And yes, the world building was lacking, but it felt secondary to the characters. Currently, the world building feels like the primary objective of this. It feels like the plot and the lore of the world really matters more than our two characters. 
and because I don't think that's as strong, I'm struggling. I'm listening to the audio and I may switch to physical just because I do like physical reads better and I don't know if I love Mickey. I don't know if I love the female voices that the narrator does. They're making her feel very juvenile and yes it's YA so I think she is juvenile but my brain will just like help me with that I think if I read it physically. So I think I'm going to switch to that because I really want to love this. I'm really hoping that once the romance like steps up I will enjoy that part because when I think about my favorite YA series a lot of them the romance like takes over for me because it's just like endearing like the Red Queen series. Love. That's a good plot, but like also like the love triangle thingy in that. Epic. Same with an ember in the ashes. The lights have been turned down low because I do kind of have a headache. My lack of sleeping, the staring at a screen, the like overhead lights being on to help me read, and probably the lack of drinking water and drinking only caffeinated beverages is not good for me. But what else is there to do during a 48 hour readathon? So I took an Advil. And I turned the lights down a little bit, enough that I can still read. But I have made it about 50% into this book. Switching to physical has really helped me. I am liking the physical book a lot better. I'm not loving it. It feels very YA. And I think if I had read this when I was the age demographic for it, I probably would have really, really enjoyed it. And I think I probably would continue on in the series at this point. But it's definitely not a new favorite. At this point, at least. I kind of want a little bit more romance. The plot isn't necessarily doing it for me as much. I honestly like Gideon's POVs the best. I think that his POVs are fun of him like kind of liking her, but being brooding about himself and also trying to figure out if she is one of the witches. There's something that's really working for me in his POVs with his like hot and coldness. Hers feels a little bit juvenile. That's all I gotta say. Let me continue now. Okay, I'm blushing. This book has grown on me. The interactions between the two of them super cute and i don't know how i feel about that because like i didn't love some of the magic system stuff in some ways this book feels so ya and in some ways it feels a little bit older and i just like i'm really struggling with my thoughts on it but the two of them together the scenes when they are together are amazing i want more of those I'm definitely intrigued. There is a lot of like politics happening. It does in some ways remind me of the Aurelian Cycle, which is one of my all time favorite series because of the discussions on like power corrupting and things like that. So I'm definitely excited to keep reading and see the last hundred pages, what that does to me. Guys, things are going down in this book and I'm literally invested. The line that I just got on chapter 39. Oh my God. Rough start, great second half, like impeccable second half. <laughs> ah, I... I was not expecting this, but I kind of loved this. I cried. Tears came out of this eyeball. Not this one. This one stays strong, but this one, oh, that one's, that one's an emotional wreck. Um, <laughs> like, what am I doing with my life? I just love stories about power corrupting. Like, I truly eat those up more than anything else in my life. The closest comparison I have to this is this series, and you know how much I love it. The discussion on power corrupting with like a little bit of romance mingled in and that YA flair. These, comparable in my opinion. Different, different vibes for sure, but comparable. My furnace is turning on, of course, when I want to talk to the camera. I'm like kind of angry. Like I have rage from reading this. Like the book made me angry at everyone and society and just everything and made me react so emotionally to so many things. I thought I was DNFing this in the first half. How did this become a book that I, I don't know if I should give five stars or not. I don't, I don't know what to give this book. I'm struggling. I'm gonna cry just thinking about the internal war happening inside of me. Like, can I look past the fact that there was a little, little plot thing for me? Can I look past the fact that I didn't like the first 100 pages that much because of that and that I felt like the world building was lacking and like the characters could have used a little bit more dimension and give it five stars? I want to, but I think it's a four star book, like a 4.5. I might change my mind in a few days. Having to film a vlog clip right after finishing a book is hard because I need to sit on my thoughts sometimes. Or is it five stars? I don't know. I do not know. I do not know at all. Can I update you later on whether it's four or five stars? Like, I really, really enjoyed this. I think it's a four star book. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I don't need to have 
existential crisis is about writing books. It's not that deep, Cassidy, but like it feels that deep. Anyways, I really, really enjoyed this. If you like YA, if you liked this story, maybe pick this one up. I think they're comparable in a lot of ways. I think I'm settling on a four star. If you've seen me changing my mind in two weeks, please say nothing, but let's get us some points. I did wild, but this is a blue cover and an animal in the cover, so it has to go to the realm of creation. It just only makes sense. It is 404 pages, so it gets me plus 20 for the team. This is gonna be a big point book. 48 hour readathon, yep. It's now a Casty fave. It was a book I paid for. It was new to my TBR. I read it in multiple formats, and I think I could count it as read a book in one sitting. And then it has my cover color and my cover item. Lots of points there. Let's spin the wheel. Let's figure out what I'm reading next. I'm gonna go have a shower. To be honest, I just need to have like an emotional wreck. <laughs> I just like to cleanse myself sometimes of feelings. But let's do a spin. Good, the only team I haven't read for yet. So for Realm of Blood, I have decided to pick up Candy Cane Kills. This is a Christmas novella, so I'm kind of reading it in the wrong time of the year, but it is wintry out. It's been snowing quite a bit over the last weekend, so it still kind of fits. Lexi kind of recommended this to me when I said I was looking for short books that I could like. It's just a little slasher about a family that goes to a cabin for Christmas. I'm 50% in already, and it is what it is. Like, I'm enjoying it but it's a slasher. Like, I feel like there's not much to say other than that. You're going into it expecting, like, characters that you probably aren't gonna like and some gruesome deaths. And I'm getting that, and I'm enjoying it, and I'm excited to see how it all plays out. There's, like, a mystery of Candy Cane, the killer. Not much else to say, but we're on our last sprint of the night on Lexi's channel, and I'm going to bed after that because I'm really pooped from reading tonight, but I have one more day ahead of me. I think I'll get one like bigger book in tomorrow is my plan. I finished Candy King Kills. I'm torn between a two or three star on this one. I really liked the first half of this book. I liked the setup of the slasher. The second half to me though was way too rushed. I didn't really have time to feel like tense or stressed at all because once the kills start they do not stop and there's no like time between them. I felt like the last half of this book was just a gore fest with no pauses or breaks. I think something I love about slashers is seeing how someone reacts in a situation like this so it's not about the kills for me as much as it is about like the discussion on society and people if you just want like gory fun kills i think you will like this but i just think it was missing a deeper layer to me the other thing i love about slashers often is trying to like figure out who the slasher was and you don't really have to do that in this one so yeah, I don't know. This just kind of let me down. I I think I'm giving it a two star. I don't think I enjoyed it. And I like to say that I enjoyed my three stars. Just not that I hated it or anything. I just don't think it was a book that I personally liked. I don't know. That's a really tough one. Apparently today I can't make decisions about what I'm rating books. This is for the Rama Blood. And I did read it in the 48 hour readathon. It is a book I paid for. A slasher is kind of a popcorn read. It has an even amount of letters in the title. It is new to my TBR as of this weekend. And I did read it in one sitting. I literally read it in one sprint. It does also have the cover color. I think that it's enough red for me to count in and I make the rules. And it does have your cover item. There is a person on the cover. Those are my points for Team Blood. I'm hoping that in the morning I'll be able to get one more read in for the weekend, but that's it. I'm going to bed for now and I think I'm gonna chill in bed a little bit tomorrow. I may not like try to get out early and read. I'm feeling a little bit of burnout. I don't wanna burn myself out of next week's reading vlog either. So I'm gonna take it easy tomorrow, I think. But I think I'm gonna do my spin now so that I can think about it all night long. It took me a long time to figure out what I was reading this morning. I ended up trying just like a bunch of first chapters trying to figure out what really grabbed my attention because I definitely am like on burnout. Um, this morning I could have just never gotten out of bed and not looked at a book for like a good three days. But my thing is when I love a book, I love a book. Like when I start reading, I have the hardest time starting books. And then when I start reading, I can get really addicted to them. So reading slumps for me are just wanting to not start books. But once I start a book, I'm constantly always out of a reading slump because once I love something, it is a new obsession for me. 
And so that's what I decided to do this morning. We're just gonna find something that really, really makes me just wanna sit down and read all day long. So I decided to pick up A Duel with the Vampire Lord by Elise Kova. I've actually read from this author before. So I'm currently now 85 pages in, 15%, and I'm loving the setup of this. It feels really dark and specifically vampire romance books can often feel not so dark. I do think this one is going to switch at some point because obviously if we're falling in love with the vampire, the vampire can't be the big bad, but the beginning of this really sets the vampires out to be these big, gruesome, big bad characters. And it really had me like feeling for our main character and this world and how gritty and dark this world was that she had to be a part of. I was really invested really early on. It's a longer book though. I'm scared I'm not gonna finish it before the end of peace talks but also if you go a couple hours later like I truly don't really care I just don't want people abusing everything that is why the rules are made it's just for the people who have abused them in the past and then I have to make these rules but if you are not abusing them you do whatever you want to do clearly just don't be a dick in a readathon <laughs> like it's just for fun so that's my my plan for today other than that I'm going for lunch with my family I am taking a little bit of a break. They asked me to go for brunch and I said yes, which my automatic instinct is to say no because I feel bad that I'm missing out on something during Realmathon. Like I feel bad that I'm not at sprints with people. I feel like I have to be present an entire month, which is not true. It's just my own brain and I am slowly working on talking my brain out of this. So baby steps and I said yes to lunch today. I would like to leave it so maybe I only have to read like an hour afterwards. So I would really like to make a dent in this. I am really, really liking it. Okay, I've made it roughly 40% into this book. This is what I wanted Silver to Nightfall and King of Battle and Blood to be. I love the vampire portrayal in this and I love the plot. There's been very little romance. I obviously know there's a romance coming and I'm kind of shocked because I'm pretty sure this is like a standalone series so it's a bunch of standalones that make up a series but like they have nothing to do with each other like this is the third book in that series but you can read them in any order so i'm like shocked by the lack of romance i've already gotten however i see how the romance is going to come to play and i love that it's being such a slow build up of them like understanding that they're not enemies and that there's a gigantic misunderstanding that is huge and has led to this big conflict between humans and vampires and that neither are what the other one thinks and i really really love that i also love that there's a horror element to it i think it's done really well like the scene that we're in right now has me on the edge of my seat wondering what's gonna happen because i'm like tense like i'm terrified for these characters and it does that really well like i'm really liking this it feels like a really really strong book i'm waiting for the romance to pick up just just a little bit just a little, little bit but the plot and the vampires maybe my favorite like vampire portrayal i could maybe call it that i don't know why but i'm finding their like <laughs> wordy battle about vampire versus vampire so endearing watching these two just like argue about the proper way to call a vampire is it just like it's not really banter but it's like their type of banter and i find it so cute like i'm living for it every time it comes up and he's like vampire not vampire i just like i just giggle well peace talks is officially over i still have three hours left in my book so i'm gonna get that done still because i personally think that that's fine. And I'm really excited because I'm really, really liking it. I kind of wish it was a series and not a standalone. Mickey is truly just living his best life with all the snuggles during the 48 hour readathon. I'm really angry at this book. And that is the weirdest feeling to have about a book that you were giving four stars. I really, really liked this book, but I'm angry at it because I could have given it five stars. And so like, I'm disappointed in it because I didn't give it five stars, but honestly, I think this book was too short and too long all at once. This, I think, would have made a beautiful duet. I wish it was more than one book. I don't understand why it was one book because the one book made the pacing suffer because there was this like slow moment of them like getting to know each other that lasted like way too long for my liking and there was a little bit too much back and forth for one book. But I also ate that up. Like I was like, give me another bowl. I'm slurping that soup. This is incredible. I really, really liked the plotline of the story. I thought it was so good. This is kind of what I've wanted out of a lot of the vampire books I've read with like some dark vampire lore where the vampires are still the good guys because it's a vampire romance, but like the evil vampire lore makes sense and isn't just like forsaken once we know that they're misunderstood. The way they acted together, I really enjoyed. I loved the found family aspects. I loved like where the story went. 
I truly did. I really liked my experience with this story. It was just too long, but also not long enough because like I wanted more from the story still. I really think that the pacing suffered because it was a standalone and a long standalone at that. I think I'm going to be thinking of these two for a really long time. I think I'm gonna be thinking about the plot in the story and the world building. The world building was legit so cool. I've loved Elise Cove in the past, so like I knew she could do it to me. This YA series is one of my favorites. So like escaping into her adult, her world building is just as good in this as it is in this. So I do think I will try more of the Married to Magic series because it's a series of standalones set in the same world, which I think is cool. And so we're going to different parts of the world and there's a different couple in each one. However, I wish they were duets. I really just want more fan row duets. I truly do. And this would have been good. How am I supposed to leave these characters now? I want to be with them past the end of this book. I want to see what's happening at the end of this book. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe if I continue to read the Married to Magic series, we'll see like snippets of what happens. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This, this whole vlog thing has kind of ruined me because like I still don't think I've settled on a rating for this. I think four stars. I think I should say four stars, but like I'm still a little unsure. Why does the furnace take turn on right now? Like as soon as I am filming, it turns on, I swear. I'm truly so angry that I can't give this five stars. The pacing was just off and I wanted to know more about the side characters, but we're gonna get some points with it. This book is 540 pages, so I do get plus 20. I'm reading this for the Rum of Blood and I did write in the 48 hour readathon. It can count as a casty fig because I gave it four stars. I count all fan row as a popcorn read. It was new to my TBR. I had not thought I was gonna read it until this weekend. And then it does have the cover color and the cover item on it as well. So lots of points for the team. I'm pulling my weight this weekend for all of you. <laughs> A pretty successful 48 hours in my opinion. I read six books, four of which I gave four stars, which as we all know it, I count as a favorite. So that's really, really exciting. I'm sad I didn't get any five stars, but you win some, you lose some. I know there's a five star coming in my future. Like I just know the reading gods are going to be like, you deserve a five star soon. And it's going to just like show up magically at my door or in my hands or on my bookshelf, I guess. So I'm not too concerned with the fact that I didn't have a five star this weekend, but I'm still looking for my five star of the month. And I only got one week left, but in this final week of Ramathon, I will be reading for team time. And these are some of the books that I'm interested in. A lot of white covers. So I'm thinking my five star will be that week. As I said, it's not too late to join Realmathon. The announcement video will be linked down below, but if you're interested in just watching more vlogs from me, check out this one right here. It's gonna be a good time. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video and you'd like to leave me an emoji just to say you were here, leave me a little butterfly emoji. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful time. Thank you for spending 48 hours with me.